Today I am happy to be presenting some of my own research on firefighter safety. And this research uh, has been published in the uh, peer-reviewed journal Risk, Hazards, and Crisis in Public Policy. And the title of this presentation is uh, Do Collective Bargaining Rights Save Lives? Duty to Bargain and Firefighter Fatalities. According to the U.S. Fire Administration, there were over 900 on-duty uh, firefighter fatalities from 2009 through 2018. Of these fatalities, slightly over half were volunteer firefighters. Uh, the leading cause of death for firefighters uh, on duty is identified as stress and overexertion, and you can see um, the other uh, parts of the causes and the breakdown of um, their employment category. <clears throat> scholars have uh, scholars identify stress, overexertion, and cardiovascular disease as key factors in firefighter fatalities. In the in a study of firefighter fatality investigations, a common problem uh, area that's identified is included. Uh, uh, as medical and fitness and training uh, issues and staffing issues. Uh, these are items that are commonly covered in collective bargaining agreements, which is one of the reasons I decided to explore this relationship between um, collective bargaining rights and firefighter fatalities. Economists view uh, labor as having two faces the monopolistic face and the voice face. The monopolistic face receives most of the attention from economists. From this perspective, uh, labor unions are rent-seeking institutions that drive wages above competitive la uh, levels and create inefficiencies. From the voice perspective, labor unions provide a collective voice in the workplace that can have a positive effect on productivity working conditions, communication, and morale. The research I'm presenting today focuses on uh, firefighter unions as a collective voice uh, that work to protect their members. The International Association of Firefighters, IAFF, represents over 320,000 firefighters in the US and Canada. Of course, much of what firefighters do is not actually fighting fires. The IAFF represents fire departments that provide uh, emergency medical services too. Today, approximately 90% of professionalized uh, fire departments provide some level of emergency medical services. The IAFF provides chapters with a model contract uh, with suggested language. Sections of this contract include language on the development of fitness and training programs, fitness evaluations, and staffing levels. Now we can get to the research question for this project. How do collective bargaining rights affect firefighter fatalities in the United States? I hypothesize that states with duty to bargain rights for firefighters have fewer firefighter fatalities than states without duty to bargain rights. I also hypothesize that the effect of duty to bargain is conditional on the presence of fully volunteer fire departments uh, in the state. Volunteer firefighters are not covered by collective bargaining agreements, so having collective bargaining rights would matter little in states that mostly rely on volunteer firefighters. By testing these hypotheses, I build the argument that firefighter unions use their collective voice to negotiate medical evaluations, training programs, staffing levels, and uh, in general working conditions, uh, which in turn protect their members and uh, are associated with fewer firefighter fatalities. At this, at this time, it is important to make sure that we know what, what duty to bargain means. 
The duty to bargain is the mutual obligation of an employer and the representative of the employees to meet at reasonable times and confer in good faith with the intent of reaching a negotiated agreement. While this requires bargaining in good faith, it does not require that either side make a concession. This is different from simply having meet and confer, where both states are required to meet and discuss things like wages and working conditions, but no negotiations are actually required to take place. Some states have explicit, have it, um, so it's explicitly illegal for public employees to collectively bargain. For example, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia all have laws that ban collective bargaining for firefighters. Collective bargaining rights did not break into the public sector until 1959, when Wisconsin became the first state to grant some public employees uh, the right to bargain. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy signed Executive Order 10988, granting the right to bargain to federal employees. Throughout the decades that followed, other states began to adopt uh, public employee bargaining laws. Some states uh, passed comprehensive laws that covered all or nearly all public employees, uh, like Ohio did in 1983. Other states, like California, passed separate pieces of legislation covering specific public employees, uh, like teachers, firefighters, and police. As of 2021, uh, 33 states have duty to bargain rights for firefighters. Those states are shaded in green on the map. In most, state, most of the remaining states, collective bargaining is legal but not required. Legality doesn't go far enough to promote collective bargaining, though. Uh, for example, it is legal for firefighters to bargain in the state of Georgia, but only the city of Savannah uh, has a negotiated agreement with their firefighters. The unit of analysis uh, in this research is state years uh, and the data span from 2009 through 2018. My dependent variable is the number of firefighter fatalities and my key independent variable is a dichotomous measure of the presence of a duty to bargain law for firefighters. So uh, a one is assigned to the state if they have these collective bargaining rights and a zero if they don't. I control for several factors. Union density captures the strength of public employee labor unions in the state. This measure is not specific to firefighter union de density. I control for uh, citizen and state government ideology because research shows that ideology influences the enforcement of federal safety regulations and uh, the types of safety regulations that are adopted at the state level. I control for the number of fire calls in each state and because uh, fire departments often uh, uh, respond to emergency, other emergencies, um, I include a measure of fatal car crashes to capture non-fire uh, emergency calls. It's a proxy measure. Finally, given that volunteer fire departments are not subject to collective bargaining, uh, in most cases at least, I control for the percent of fire departments in the state that are fully volunteer. I use a zero inflated negative binomial regression for two reasons. The first reason has to do with the data itself. There is uh, over dispersion in the data um, with an excess of zeros. Uh, the second reason is theoretical. Uh, Zero inflated models are appropriate in situations where you have an excessive number of zeros in the data, like we have, uh, that are being caused by two separate processes. Uh, in this case, there are zeros that are a product of firefighters responding to emergency calls and returning safely, and there are zeros uh, that are uh, a product of a lack of emergency calls. Table one shows the results of two models, one with an interaction 
uh, between duty to bargain and volunteer and one without uh, the interaction. Z the zero inflated models estimate a count model and a logit model. The logit model predicts zeros and contains variables that are expected to account for excess zeros. The, result of, uh, the results of interest here are from the count model. Uh, as you can see in model one, uh, it shows a statistically significant negative relationship between duty to bargain rights for firefighters and firefighter fatalities. Model one also shows a positive relationship between Foley volunteer fire departments and firefighter fatalities. Model two shows that, uh, there, that the interaction between duty to bargain and volunteer is statistically significant. The results here are not easily interpreta interpreted from the table, but uh, predicted fatalities can help clarify the results. So table two shows the predicted number of firefighter fatalities in duty to bargain and non-duty to bargain states. The predictions are calculated uh, with other variables in the model set to their mean. And 90% uh, confidence intervals are shown in the brackets below. The predicted numbers, number of fatalities are low, but that's expected when modeling such a rare event. But you can see that uh, the predicted number of fatalities in any given year in, uh, in, a, in a state is uh, greater in non-duty to bargain states than those with duty to bargain collective bargaining rights for uh, uh, their firefighters. Moving to the interaction effect, the best way to interpret the interaction between duty to bargain and volunteer fire departments uh, is to graph the results. The figure shown here is, uh, is the, uh, shows the predicted number of firefighter fatalities at different levels of fully volunteer fire departments by duty to bargain status. The shaded areas are 90% confidence intervals. The graph shows that duty to bargain states have significantly fewer firefighter fatalities, but the effect of duty to bargain uh, dissipates when states rely heavily on fully volunteer fire departments. Uh, this, is, this is to be expected as uh, uh, you have um, a state that has a high percentage of fully volunteer fire departments, even if collective bargaining is illegal, it's, uh, they don't engage in collective bargaining with volunteer, uh, uh, fully volunteer fire departments. So um, the protections that can be made in collective bargaining agreements uh, don't make uh, don't make a difference. So, um, for those of you who are sticklers about your graphs, you'll notice that I cut off the x-axis at uh, twenty percent and eighty percent. Only one state, uh, Hawaii, has fewer than twenty percent of their total uh, fire departments as fully volunteer, and about a dozen states have. 80% uh, or more of their departments as fully volunteer, but as you can tell what happens at those level, it levels is that the shaded areas completely overlap. So, so the, uh, uh, the areas where duty to bargain makes a difference in firefighter fatalities is uh, when you don't have uh, such a high percentage of volunteer fire, uh, fire departments, which, which makes sense um, given what we're talking about, collective bargaining and um, professionalized fire departments or, or uh, combined uh, fire departments. The results of this analysis uh, provide support that firefighter unions use their collective voice to improve working conditions and protect their members, which in turn leads to fewer firefighter fatalities. In, uh, in Janus v. Ask Me, uh, 2018, the Supreme Court ruled that the deduction of fees from non-members is unconstitutional. Uh, though the long-term effects of Janus are uh, largely unknown, public safety unions argued that the ruling would undercut the ability to collectively bargain for items that, uh, that affect their safety and the safety of the public. In a brief submitted by the IA IAFF to the Supreme Court, they argued Firefighters, 
Emergency medical service employees and other first responders routinely face grave danger while on duty, working through the most extreme hazards to protect their communities. Through collective bargaining, the IAFF and its local affiliates work to reduce on-the-job hazards and risks for union members and non-members alike. The results of this analysis suggest that this is not simply just a claim the IAFF makes logically, but uh, that the data here actually support the idea that collective bargaining rights uh, and collective bargaining uh, is important for the protection of firefighters. This research also has implications uh, for the use of volunteer firefighters. Overall, it is within the best interest of the IAFF to limit the number of volunteers used by localities. Combination departments, those staffed by volunteer and career firefighters, uh, can cause tension between the two groups. Um, however, the results presented here suggest that more combination or fully career fire departments would reduce firefighter fatalities. Given the uh, given a la the large portion of fatalities each year uh, that are from volunteer firefighters, volunteers could benefit from working alongside career firefighters that negotiate working conditions, even though uh, volunteer firefighters are not uh, directly covered uh, in their collective bargaining agreements. A shift to more combination or fully career Fire departments would be costly to local communities, but the decline in uh, volunteer firefighters in recent years may force localities to embrace more combination or career departments. And with that, uh, that concludes um, uh, my presentation here of uh, this research, and um, uh, thank you.